the I Make a Difference podcast, an adventure of exploration of your human self, the conditioned and unhealed parts of you, and your true self, the natural, real and powerful you, a pathway where you unravel, heal and uncover on your journey back to you. I'm your host, Melinda. Well, this human experience and being a human being, it certainly is interesting. I often find it quite a bit more than interesting, fascinating, bizarre, mm, frustrating at times, which means I've got an emotional attachment to it. But how can we as humans have so many different opinions and views and interpretations of things? I ponder on Is our soul self like that? And I get it's not. So all of these different opinions and views, etc. are part of our human experience. And were we designed to have different opinions and views so that we would have conflict, so that we would fight to stand up for our beliefs, so that we would, I don't know, reject certain other ways of being and living? Which leads us on to the next stage of our human adventure. And how is it that we can end up being so different as human beings? And yet fundamentally we're all the same. And we all come from our soul self. So why does it change so much? Have you ever questioned at times, who am I really? Have you ever felt like you have a number of different yous, a number of different people that you express yourself as and present yourself as. Well, the reality is you do. And so have I, and possibly I still do at times. And what those are, are personas. They are the mask, the facade, and as some people have termed it, the fake you. The you that is normalized, not natural. And you don't just have one persona. You have a number of personas. Because at every single layer that you created, which came about because of that experience of non-acceptance, where you were judged, you were rejected and even made wrong, and reaction to what you experienced, you suppressed aspects of yourself. You suppressed your true self, your soul self. You suppressed your soul expression. You suppressed your connection to your knowing. You suppressed what was good and beautiful and pure about you. Or at least you suppressed varying degrees of that. But you also suppressed your human self. You suppressed your memories. You suppressed your thinking, your thoughts. You suppressed your emotions. You suppressed your physiological responses. You suppressed bodily functions and physical expression. And you also suppressed the energy attached to those different processes and your sensing. So that layer became filled with suppressed potential and the naturalness of who you are. And through that process... You also protected yourself. You protected yourself from the outside world with that layer. From experiencing the experiences you had that hurt. You protected yourself from further non-acceptance, further judgment, further rejection. But does it really protect us? Or does that stuff still continue? You protected yourself from other people's reactions, their expression, their emotions. Because you didn't know how to handle some of that. But you also protected yourself internally from your soul self. Possibly because you believed you didn't deserve to be that person because of the non-acceptance you experienced. You protected yourself from your emotions because they possibly were overwhelming and you didn't like the feeling of them. And you didn't know how to deal with them. And you protected yourself from what was good what was natural, and your potential. And through the process of you suppressing and protecting, 
what you created at that layer was a persona. You began to express yourself either in slightly different ways or significantly different ways. You unconsciously, and maybe even consciously, chose to show the world a you that would be accepted, that would fit in, that would belong, that would be liked, and that would be loved. You also will have created personas that enabled you to feel safe and secure. And you don't just have one persona, you have one for each layer. And as I said, they'll be slightly different or extremely different from each other. I know one of my personas, when I went round to friend's place when I was a teenager, was one where I was so respectful and polite and so helpful. Now, what was interesting is that was actually elements of me that were natural to me, but how they were expressed and the reason for them being expressed was because I felt unwanted in my home environment at that point in time. So by behaving in this way, I stood out to a lot of my other friends and my friends' parents liked me and they welcomed me, which was very different from what I experienced at home. But then on the flip side, I had this really staunch, tough chick persona where I'd be aggressive, I'd be tough and strong, and I'd take girls and guys on in fights and arguments. Now, what was sitting underneath all of that was natural aspects of me of strength and belief. But yet again, it was how I expressed them that wasn't real and natural to me. It was what I learned and what I was conditioned with as to how to express myself. And the reason I was being a tough chick was I didn't feel I had any power at home. So I was finding the power in me through other people outside of my home. And a lot of our personas were actually quite unconscious around them. They have become habit, they've become something so familiar that we're not even aware that depending on the situation, depending on our role in the situation, depending on the people we're around, depending on what's expected of us, we can change how we behave how we express ourselves verbally and what we say, even our tone of voice, our speed of voice. We will express our energy in different ways. We will put more effort into certain situations and people than we will others. We will put more energy into certain situations than we will others. And we'll feel drained and exhausted and tired because we're doing what is not natural to us. We'll take lots of time to prepare ourselves so that we're ready to step into situations, whether it's in how our dress is, how we look, what we're going to say, how we're going to behave. These are all indicators that we have a persona operating. Even down to, I remember one of mine was my smile. And I knew when I had sore cheeks by the end of the night and not because of laughing that I had been putting up a fake smile for the evening, which meant that possibly I didn't even want to be there or I didn't find what I was doing something comfortable and natural to me. So I was covering up. Our personas are not the real us. But what is important to know is that our personas have been important are vital and have been an essential part of our human experience because we were not aware and conscious enough as to how to manage what was going on around us, as to how to not take on board other people's non-acceptance and judgments and rejection and expectations of us. We didn't know how to stay true to who we really are. Our personas helped us get through those situations. They helped us to cope where we may have fallen apart. They helped us to exist and to survive in situations. What is really important 
is not to then not accept them, judge them or reject them, but rather to embrace them, to thank them for being so so supportive and helpful of getting us to where we are. Because without them, we wouldn't have got to where we are. And it's about accepting and loving them. Because your personas are parts of you. Parts of you where you rejected another part of you and created this persona you. So you're the one that can change this and unravel this. And in the doing so, what you'll discover is the part of you that you did reject. Because your personas want permission that they can let go. That they don't have to exist anymore in the way that they have. They don't have to express themselves in the way that they have. Because you're giving you permission not to have to do that anymore. When people talk about the different versions of themselves, they're talking about the different personas that they have put forward. It really is just cover up of our vulnerability and our neediness and our lack of self-worth. Because we are scared to be who we truly are. Because we're scared we'll be judged and rejected and not accepted again. But it's in your hands as to whether you choose for that to happen again or not. And we put up personas because we don't believe we actually deserve to be who we truly are. But you're the only one believing that. So embrace your personas. Love them for how they've helped you get to where you are now. And recognize them as parts of you that need your love your acceptance and your permission for them to not have to force themselves to be something they're not anymore. And as far as the fake you goes, you didn't go out to be the fake you. You learnt to be the fake you because you probably had lots of really good examples around you. So give yourself the time to be gentle and loving with you on your journey in discovering more of the true you, your soul self.